Welcome back to the very interesting topic that is plasma cell neoplasms as such. What is plasma cell? It is a modified B lymphocytes. You know, they are the only cells in the body which are able to secrete the immunoglobulins. What we call antibodies. So immunoglobulins are secreted by modified B lymphocytes. We call them as plasma cells. So this is a disease where the neoplastic plasma cells will be generated. So we call it as plasma cell discrecias. So this is how the plasma cell will appear. It is a cell with the eccentrically placed nucleus with a perinuclear clear halo and intense blue cytoplasm. So cartwheel appearance of the nucleus. So this is how the plasma cells will appear. So let us have a diagrams uh, and a classical picture about the plasma cells and let us understand what is the etiology for this myeloma, multiple myeloma or plasma cell disorders, how to identify what is the diagnostic criteria that we take into account to, to name the patient is having multiple myelomas and very interesting topic of plasma cell neoplasms is here. So the definition goes like this. It is a group of lymphoid neoplasms of terminally differentiated B cells that have in common the expansion of the single clone of immunoglobulin secreting plasma cells and the resultant increase in the serum levels of single homogeneous immunoglobulin or its fragments. So it is mainly a tumor, a neoplasm, a cancer of the blood of terminally differentiated B lymphocytes. They have a property of secreting the single clone of immunoglobulin. So this is a disease of the plasma cells which are known to secrete immunoglobulins. And not only that, there will be a serum levels of high levels of this homogeneous immunoglobulin levels will be raised and sometimes even its fragments will be raised. So at the end of this particular presentation, you will come to know why we have told the definition like this. So have a look at this plasma cells normal plasma cells how will appear and these are the beautiful cells in the bone marrow to see they have eccentrically placed nucleus cartwheel appearance so this is cartwheel appearance so <clears throat> this is eccentrically placed nucleus perinuclear clear halo it is said to be due to the high amount of Galgi apparatus that are present in the plasma cells because these cells will secrete the immunoglobulins that are modified by the Galgi apparatus so increased number of Galgi apparatus that causes this perinuclear clear halo. Yes, there are four categories of plasma cell discrecias. Essential monoclonal gammopathies, Wardenstrom's macroglobulinemia, then solitary plasma cytoma, which involves only one bone as such or only one lesion as such. Then what I am going to deal mainly is the plasma cell myeloma or what we call it as multiple myeloma when it involves the multiple bones as such. So I am not going to detail about the different other, uh, they are a little bit less as compared to the multiple minimum. This is very very common. It constitutes around 15% of all malignant uh, white cell disorders and responsible for 1% of the cancer deaths. It is all due to the excessive production of these monoclonal immunoglobulins in the blood. We call them as M proteins. M stands for myeloma. Myeloma proteins are produced in excessive way. So it mainly involves the axial skeleton at multiple sites. When I use the word axial skeleton, it is the central axis of the body. That is the skull is mainly involved. Then the, the ribs are mainly involved. The clavicle is mainly involved. So this is central axis of the body, including even pelvic bones. So this particular bones are get commonly involved and they show osteolytic lesions on the skull x-ray. Most of the time, this is a disease limited to the elderly people, 60 years, 70 years is the peak age of onset of this particular disease and incidence in different countries it varies, approximately it is around 4 cases per 1 lakh population. What is the etiology for this particular plasma cell myeloma, blood cancer as such is the probably ionizing radiation that is the one which makes the person to susceptible for various leukemias and lymphomas including the plasma cell myelomas. Very common in the African blacks and it shows peculiar male predominance. And in Indian setup we have seen that farmers, the 
in the agriculture industry they will use plenty of insecticide pesticides so they are the one who commonly suffer from this uh, disorder multiple myeloma probably there is a role of these uh, insecticides pesticides so they may cause chemical carcinogenesis and it may induce the multiple myelomas so what is the pathogenesis of this myeloma so there is excessive secretion of the cytokine one of the important cytokine you have to remember is the interleukin 6 that is said to be very highly raised in patient with the multiple myeloma so that's the one which is actually responsible for the growth and proliferation of the plasma cells and there is excessive production of this cytokine interleukin 6 also in turn can activate the osteoclastic giant cells so osteoclasts are get activated mainly because interleukin 6 is capable of activating rank ligand so that's a ligand that is present in the osteoclasts that is get activated so osteoclasts are get stimulated and there will be excessive removal of the bone so they causes osteolysis not only that it is actually at the molecular level it is at the genetic level there can be deletions of 13 chromosome rearrangement of the 14th chromosome or there can be various uh, translocations can take place translocation between 4 to 14th chromosome and various growth receptors can be get reactivated or hyper expressed so all those things are in turn responsible for the uh, development of the multiple myeloma so what we as a pathologist we see under the uh, peripheral smear and what is the most important is the bone marrow examination so simple peripheral smear examination may reveal a clue to the diagnosis of myeloma by seeing the rbc's showing excessive rolex formation what is this that rbc's will align in a linear fashion i'll show diagrammatically later on so there is increased rolex formation and x-ray is most important uh, diagnostic tool in these multiple myelomas so we see very peculiar osteolytic lesions on the skull x-ray or uh, some other axial skeleton may be get affected we call them as punched out lesions so remember this is an mcq uh, for the uh, entrance examination so they commonly ask where the punch out punched out lesions are seen so either the skull or the entire spine or the pelvic bones can show the punched out lesions and one more important laboratory test we will do is the serum protein electrophoresis to look for these abnormal uh, protein levels in urine we do very peculiar test we call it as ben johns protein urea what is this ben johns protein whenever you hit the urine containing the proteins it will coagulate protein will coagulate and you show you will see the turbidity of the urine sample these ben johns proteins are very peculiar so in a test tube you take a urine and you keep on heating at 60 to 65 degrees centigrade these benjon proteins will appear so you will see the turbidity at 55 to 65 degrees centigrade so you heat further they disappear the turbidity disappears then you bring it back to again to 60 to 65 degrees centigrade they reappear so this is a special test what we call it as benjon's protein urea test for the myeloma so this is one of the te important tests what we do in clinically uh, to look for these cases of myelomas peculiarly they also show uh, high esr levels it's mainly because of the increased immunoglobulin levels and the must and the compulsory mandatory investigation is the bone marrow examination unless you do bone marrow aspiration and study it in detail you cannot diagnose the multiple myeloma as such yes blood smear will show it will be more of blue because of the excessive amount of immunoglobulin sometimes even plasma cells come into the circulation if plenty of plasma cells come into circulation then we call it as plasma cell leukemia as such it is very very rare but it can happen so what is this rolex formation so this is rbc's when they align in a linear row and attach to each other this is called as rolex formation so it's only mainly because of the excessive immunoglobulins that makes the rbc to adhere each other so it is called as rolex formation it is not you know rolex formation can be seen as even an artifact also but whenever you see with all other findings whenever you see rolex formation you, then you should give importance for the uh, this rolex formation and these are how the plasma cells will appear they usually seen in the bone marrow rarely plasma cells even can come into the blood circulation as such so this is classical bone marrow aspiration uh, 
uh, how it appears the myeloma cases normal what is the percentage of plasma cells it is 0 to 3 percent not more than 3 percent so here you will see that the plasma cells this is a plasma cell this is a plasma cell see the eccentrically placed nucleus beautiful plasma cells so they are very lovely to see under uh, microscope so eccentrically placed nucleus perinuclear clear hello deep blue cytoplasm see blue cytoplasm so these are all plasma cell how many are there see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so if you count if it is more than 30 percent that is enough that is one of the important criteria to call it as multiple myeloma along with the myeloblast you can see i mean the sorry the plasma cells you can see plasma blast which are uh, dividing cells sometimes we call it as flame cells the one with the fiery red cytoplasm is the flame cell or sometimes you can see the the plasma cells with the multiple vacuoles like a grape like vacuoles we call it as mod cells sometimes we can see intracytoplasmic accumulation of the immunoglobulins then we call it as russell bodies sometimes we can see within the nucleus intranuclear accumulation of the inclusions we call it as the dutcher bodies so remember few important points in multiple myeloma flame cells nothing but the plasma cells with the fiery red cytoplasm again due to the excessive amount of these uh, denatured immunoglobulins mod cells are the plasma cells with the cytoplasmic inclusions so it is appear like grape like grape like uh, structures within the cytoplasm mod cells so intracytoplasmic uh, excessive amount of immunoglobulins will be deposited as pink homogeneous inclusions so we call it as russell bodies if they are seen in the cytoplasm intracytoplasmic are the russell bodies if they are intranuclear we call it as dutcher bodies so they can also be seen sometimes in the cases of multiple myelomas So the diagnostic criteria, one more important test we will do is the serum electrophoresis. That is again the most investigation in cases of uh, multiple myeloma. 60% of these cases will have uh, raised levels of immunoglobulin G. Remember myeloma M protein, it don't confuse for IgM. It is the IgG which is very classically raised. In 60% of the cases it is monoclonal IgG levels are raised. 20% of the cases it is monoclonal IgA is raised, in other 20% it is monoclonal immunoglobulins of light chains are raised. So whenever you use the word Ben Jones proteins, it is mainly in the urine, what we see kappa and lambda basis of the, the Ben Jones proteins. So whenever you do serum electrophoresis, you will see that the spike will be there at the gamma portion. So this is how the uh, electrophoresis, uh, uh, the paper will appear. And this is one of the important diagnostic tests for the multiple myeloma cases. Yes, after that we have uh, the diagnostic criteria. So without this criteria, it is uh, you know it becomes very vague to call the cases as multiple myeloma. So we have certain uh, criteria. Salman and Durai has classified the major criteria. Salman criteria, what we call. So one of the major criteria is the more than thirty percent of the plasma cells should be seen in the bone marrow this is most important uh, criteria then you should have a serum immunoglobulin levels mainly IgG will be raised more than 3.5 gram per deciliter or IgA will be raised more than 2 gram per deciliter urinary kappa and lambda chains should be raised more than 1 gram per 24 hours and you have to do bone marrow biopsy to prove it as plasma cytoma right we have minor criteria also around 10 to 30 percent will be the plasma cells bone marrow plasma cells monoclonal protein should be present but it will be lesser than the what i said previously decrease normal immunoglobulin levels and the most important x-ray finding is the punched out lesions so lytic lesions in the skull x-ray or in the axial skeletal x-ray so at least one major and one minor criteria should be there to call the patient is having multiple myeloma or at least three minor criteria should be there including one and two that means around 10 to 30 percent should be the bone marrow plasma cells and there should be a monoclonal protein should be present so then only you can call the patient is having multiple myeloma yes the x-ray will peculiarly show classical punched out lesions so it's all because of the exaggerated osteoclastic activity because of the interleukin 6 levels so these punched out lesions could be just around one centimeter or as big as around four centimeters in diameter so very classically we take uh, skull x-rays very commonly shows 
multiple punched out lesions but other axial skeleton may also show so it all depends so in multiple myeloma it's a multiple bones that are getting what there are solitary plasmocytoma it's only one bone is will show these findings what are the clinical features in a patient with a multiple myeloma so a patient can even present with a bony pain sometimes they can even present with a pathological fractures so whenever pathological fracture is suspected that is with even minute amount of trauma patient can come with the fracture so that time you can expect the pathological fractures at the fracture site itself you have to do the bone marrow biopsy studies then you will see plenty of plasma cells sometimes there can be neurological manifestation mainly due to the hypercalcemia because excessive amount of calcium will be released by because of this osteoclastic activity osteolysis will take place so cal serum calcium levels may be raised and that may be responsible for the neurological manifestations confusions and patient can also complain about weakness and lethargy these patients are again prone for recurrent infections because the immunoglobulins whatever are synthesized they are all monoclonal immunoglobulins they are not useful for the body to fight against the infections renal insufficiency can develop and we call it as renal myeloma can happen so myeloma kidney will show peculiar deposition of the amyloid so remember amyloid is this most important cause is again uh, plasma cell disorders so amyloid can be deposited in variety of organs most importantly in the kidney it will be get deposited in myeloma kidney we will do the renal biopsy we will do and we will see the uh, sections under uh, with after staining with the congruent stain under uh, uh, polarizing microscope if you see you will see you will see the apple green birefringence so that indicates that patient is having the deposition of the amyloid so, but amyloid can be deposited in wide variety of organs including the skin so congruent stain then study under the polarizing microscope to look for the apple green birefringence is very important test again uh, in cases of the multiple myelomas so in general the patient will not do good sometimes they can even develop a hyper viscosity syndrome it can even result in a blindness it can result in a hypercoagulable status patient can have a thrombosis and very tough complications of uh, ischemia and other things can happen overall the prognosis is not good uh, treatment with the uh, bisphosphonates and other uh, anticytokines so it can improve the life span only up to 6 to 12 months but overall the bone marrow transplantation may be cure, uh, may be a uh, treatment of choice but uh, one should need a you know the siblings and hla cross matching should be done then only the little hopes can be done but overall the prognosis for multiple myeloma is not so good but it may improve in the future we hope that more and more uh, proper treatment may come in the future so with that i'll end up with a very nice interesting topic that is plasma cell disorder multiple myeloma